Hi, I'm Alina Jamaluddin from Erama Malaysia. You're watching Weekly Review on Capital. So, in part two of a Weekly Review's interview with Maxim Barov talks on Russia being competitive and the country's goals and visions for the next eight years. Hi, welcome back to the Weekly Review with me, Nora. So, right, on the third and part or final part for today, Deputy Trade Representative of the Russian Federation, Maxim Borov, will let us know on where and how you can invest in Russia and what incentive would be appealing to take. If you want to, uh, if you want to invest in Russia, what are the sectors okay. that you can look at to now okay. for the long term? Okay, of course, uh, yeah, very good question. Thank you. So, of course, um, uh, it's up to investors to choose. Uh, what, uh, what we can say now is that most of foreign investors in Russia, they prefer to go to raw materials, to natural resources, to uh, do business, to do investment in the field uh, where the goods produced for export in Russia. Um, but uh, that's not only the one room for investment in, uh, in, in our country, because uh, they can also invest in, in products are oriented uh, on uh, local market, oh, on, yes, yes. domestic market, mm -hmm. such as, I don't know, maybe even cars, home appliances, smart Malaysia is very famous uh, in these fields. Uh, of course, uh, if you speak about investment, uh, all businessmen will scrutinize and will uh, calculate very carefully uh, about uh, how, how profitable uh, this business could, could be. And uh, in this case, I strictly recommend to go to the Russian law and to check uh, whether tax or maybe non tax uh, incentives uh, will, uh, will, uh, will suggest to such companies in Russia uh, to, to develop to, to easy development of, of the projects. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, speaking about uh, the Malaysian investment uh, into the Russia, uh, we have one quite significant pro project which was um, open uh, only at six, if I'm not mistaken, like seven months ago mm -hmm. in Russian region of Habaks. Do you know the company in Bunan Hijau? This was a big company from Sama. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So they opened the timber factory yeah, in Russian uh, Habarsk uh, region. They actually export it to Russia, right? Uh, no, no, no. They opened the factory there. Factory and there. they will import timber, I don't know, timber plates, okay, so some products. Uh, process. Process products to, to Malaysia, maybe to other countries in the region. And the, the investment scale is uh, approximately uh, 100 million US dollars. Pretty. Uh, that's a total, total, total. total spending, yeah. The, the, that's that quite a big one. It was lasting for um, maybe eight years, quite a long time, but uh, successfully, hopefully, it, I don't remember when the contract was signed, but something like uh, eight or maybe ten years ago. But it was uh, launched just, just last year, mm -hmm. uh, in the last November. Mm -hmm. So when you say, you know, a uh, lot of sectors really, uh, first is the raw materials, and so uh, after that is a, a domestic market, you know, yeah. maybe uh, right now, when the EU crisis is still going on, uh, what are your suggestions that for the investors to invest in Russia, uh, that is more stable, maybe in medicals, as you say, maybe you have, you may have some some grants to, to uh, I mean for, for, for the investors to look into all the rules maybe. Yeah, yeah, by the way that's a very good idea, very good idea because uh, if uh, some entrepreneurs uh, calculate and count which destination, which country is better to go, uh, definitely they uh, they go to macro macro statistics and try to understand what's what's the market is. And I would like to just to uh, underline to figure out some statistic data about Russia. And you, I, I suppose you can be even surprised because uh, in Russia you can find. Uh, by the way, the Russia is sixth by by the scale, uh, largest economy in the world by GDP. So that's not only the point. Uh, yeah, I can say you that uh, Russia has the highest GDP per capita among BRICS. Uh, countries, you know, Brazil, Russia, the Ukraine, Brazil, Russia, India, uh, China, and South mm -hmm. South Africa, uh, so far. So, uh, and uh, uh, 
this uh, GDP per capita in, in Russia um, more than 15 US dollars per year per annum. That, that's quite a big amount of money. Main, it's it really means that you can't see it. It's really 15 uh, 15,000 uh, US dollars per person, per, per capita. Mm. Uh, that's quite a, quite a yeah, high quite level. Uh, and uh, by the way, in Russia, uh, we have a special uh, index, special uh, criteria to define uh, middle class. Middle class is actually, according to statistics, is growing. And um, the number of households uh, with uh, with uh, income more than uh, ten thousand US dollars per year in Russia, uh, if we calculate all these households, we can uh, be surprised that uh, more than thirty million households we have in our country. Comparing with India, uh, they have population much much bigger than we have in Russia. Uh, I think six maybe seven times bigger, but they have the same level, the same thirty. Uh, 30 million households uh, of uh, middle uh, class income. Yes, but the thing is, I mean, uh, Russia has vastly developed by now. I thought that Russia, I maybe mean, Russia is an emerging economy. So, but but I mean, in the in the BRICS um, mm. uh, alliance itself, uh, Russia is one of the most uh, developed countries, right? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. By some extent, <laughs> we have a lot of problems still because because of this. Uh, uh, you remember I told the one phrase from mm -hmm. uh, from Bismarck. Right, right. So uh, in terms of investments, again, do, do you have any, um, I'll say, benefits that, or maybe tax incentive for investors yeah. to go into Russia? Can you yeah, speak yeah. more about that? Yeah, speaking about tax incentive, yeah, uh, that's a very good question also because um, uh, the again comparing with other Greeks countries. Uh, we can find that uh, in Russia you can find the lowest corporate tax uh, rate uh, at about uh, 20%. Mm -hmm. Then if you go to personal income tax, uh, you can find that uh, in Russia we have only 13%. Uh, uh, this is for, for, for personal income, I mean that uh, and this scale, by the way, is regardless to income size. It, it, it doesn't matter whether the person is rich or poor. Mm -hmm. All people must pay uh, only 30 percent. Yes, but it, that's very low level because, as far as I know, in China they have 45 percent. Um, uh, of course, uh, after the global crisis, after the year 2009, speaking about tax incentives, uh, there are many programs uh, which. Uh, focus on helping companies, especially medium and small enterprises, to, to develop and to survive in, in these difficult uh, conditions. And uh, there are a lot of uh, taxes which are diminished and minimized uh, up to zero, or uh, so so down to zero. So, if I'm uh, one of the businesses here in Malaysia, so if I want to invest in, in Russia, so I have this uh, tax exemption? Yeah. You can you can get a lot of exemptions. You you need to choose what kind of business you wanna uh, yeah, you can, we, go we for. Right? In the sectors that uh, have these tax exemptions. Yes, uh, especially most of uh, of the Russian tax law uh, focus on on the one uh, great priority to diversify Russian economy. If you wanna to invest in I don't know in, uh, in oil and gas business, uh, I think uh, that will be not much exemptions. Mm -hmm. and any tax incentives. But if you would like to develop in Russia, maybe in, uh, in jo joint venture form, it's up to you, uh, any uh, high tech and uh, value added products, mm -hmm. I think uh, that uh, tax exemptions and tax level could be uh, down to zero. Ah. They will not get anything. Uh, this is speaking about tax, uh, tax incentives. Uh, this is mentioning what um, my business wants to collaborate with uh, another business in Russia, yeah. right? It's up to you. Even if you want to have in Russia 100% company uh, which belongs to Malaysian uh, owner, uh, that's not a problem at all. You will uh, get the same exemptions and the same tax incentives, uh, good uh, conditions for, for doing business in Russia. It doesn't matter whether you have a Russian partner or not. Mm -hmm. uh, I see, I see. So, I mean, it, it, is, it is a very good benefit then for, for the investors to invest in Russia in, in sectors like that, such as in IT and software. Yeah, yeah, medical, of course, right? of medical course. and uh, of course. 
such as you said, maybe nuclear sector, right? To yeah. identify priorities for the Russian yes. Russian yes. government, yeah, right? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I see. Exactly. So, when, when you think about that, um, speaking back to the GDP growth, uh, I mean, does Russia has made a, a t- t- less a t- lesson with Malaysia's economic transformation program, also the uh, government transformation program to actually yeah. uh, emulate that in Russia? Yeah, uh, we have been, uh, very many similar points. Uh, we need to, maybe we, we should better communicate between uh, governmental bodies, between governmental agencies. And by the way, uh, uh, there is one idea. Uh, now we are together with uh, Malaysian uh, authorities, Malaysian government, working on uh, one uh, actually uh, ambitious goal. We would like to fix a framework for communication between governments. We would like to to create a Intergovernmental Commission, uh, which will work in, in trade and in science and culture and everything, will uh, help business to, to develop all this, uh, all this travel they can collide with. So I think that uh, that if this mechanism will be launched, uh, uh, it will help uh, tremendously to to to, to the relation to, to develop. Mm-hmm. Like you see, uh, trade or uh, trade investment between. Malaysia and Russia is about two million uh, US dollars. No, no, uh, two billion. Two billion. billion. Two billion. Yeah. Two billion US less than two billion, but still not so high. Two yeah. billion US dollars year on year, yeah, it's still not too high. So, uh, do you think that with this uh, non-tax incentive and also tax incentive, can actually help investors or to attract investors more to Russia to invest? Uh, in Russia? Of course, all these in, uh, in incentives are uh, focused on attracting foreign investors, foreign uh, uh, companies who, who prefer to make an FDI, foreign direct investment. So uh, it will help uh, us, us to develop a relation between companies and uh, develop investment sector as it is, but also, uh, as you mentioned, to, it will help to develop trade also. Because, uh, yeah, because uh, as, as I have already said, uh, most of companies when they trip, uh, when they uh, considering the business in uh, far destination, they they mostly prefer to uh, to invest money in the projects which will uh, which uh, outcome will uh, come back to this country. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's uh, many such kind of projects uh, we can many major uh, resources still, but also it could be everything. Mm-hmm. Of course, the big companies they have uh, their own strategies and they do business a different way. They, they estimate much many factors. But uh, speaking about the uh, the starting level of cooperation, we should go this way. Right, right. So, okay, one last question before we end our session here. Uh, do you think that uh, Malaysia and Russia can, you know, go through or say move forward to actually, you know? Uh, uh, achieving more than maybe uh, the five billion level. <laughs> yes, yes, I, I'm, I'm sure. We in the next five years, we maybe why not? By the way, why not? We, we should uh, check our relations. We should, we should maybe yeah, decide and uh, look in details what, what is good, what is bad, and uh, and put any ambitious goal like you have in governmental transformation and the government transformation program in Malaysia, uh, maybe to double. Trade relation in upcoming two, three, I don't know, five years, why not? Right. And uh, find out the ways how can we do it. And uh, I think that this framework, if uh, it will be uh, launched in the near future, it will help. I'm speaking of the Intergovernmental Commission. Russia reported a trade surplus equivalent to 14 billion US dollars in June of 2012. Historically, from 1994 until 2012, Russia balance of trade average is 7.05 billion US dollars reaching an all-time high of 20.5 billion US dollars in December of 2011 and a record low of 0.19 billion dollars in February of 1998. Metals and energy make up more than 80% of Russia's exports. The country is the world's largest oil producer and the biggest exporter of natural gas, nickel and palladium. 
Well, so that was uh, Maxim Barov from the trade representations of the Russian Federation. Don't forget to send us your feedback on the show at weeklyreviewcapital at gmail.com or hashtag weeklyreviewcapital on Twitter. Our Facebook page is up and running, so you can reach us there at facebook.com slash weeklyreviewcapital. We'll be right back after the break. Lenovo's up at the ante with the ThinkPad X1 Carbon. Interested? Stay tuned with us.